want to open with this statement with this statement and if you're watching online if you want to get my sermon notes go to westcoastchurch.com go click to where it says uh, uh, sermon uh, join us live and then hit sermon notes and you'll get it West Coast Church live and then sermon notes Kenneth Hagin said this he wrote a book on, he's wrote, written several books on healing he says not everyone is going to receive a supernatural manifestation of the gifts of the spirit but everyone can stand on God's word and receive a miracle by faith I think sometimes we limit God so much like all right come up I'm going to pray for you you're going to receive a miracle and that's that's wonderful that's legit we see great men of God through the through the years through the centuries that have just um, you know had a tremendous healing ministry but not everyone's going to get that manifestation of a, of, of, of a gift of the Spirit working in their lives where they're going to receive healing. But everyone can stand on the Word. Everyone can stand on the Word and receive healing. I, I don't know. I remember when I was seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit, you know. Uh, and I was seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I ran across different people. Somebody, some people told me, just stay away from that group of people. They're crazy, you know. This is of the devil. And, uh, you know, and then I, had other, then I ran across another group of people who said, no, that's the greatest thing in the world. You know, hang around them. And, and I said, I didn't believe either one of them. <laughs> I, you know, I kind of I grew up. I didn't believe anybody until I found it in the scriptures for myself. That when I saw that there was a baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that it was accompanied by the speaking in tongues that he gave us a supernatural, uh, supernatural prayer language whereby we could communicate with God on his level of understanding in spirit and truth. And we never got it wrong when we prayed in the spirit. When I f discovered that, and that wasn't an overnight process, but when I discovered that, I wanted it with my whole heart and went after it and went after it. So sometimes I think we limit ourselves to one way. God's going to work in everybody's heart in, in different ways. And, and so just walk with him and he'll do it. We're talking today about the lady with the issue of blood. Mark chapter 5, if you got your Bibles, if you got your Bibles, your phones, your computers, whatever you got that, that, that will get you to the Scriptures, Mark 5, 24 through 34, the Bible says a woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and suffered many things from many physicians. Many things from many physicians. Uh, you know, well, I'm not going to say it. Let's go on. And she spent all that she had and was no better but grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, for she said, if I can only touch his clothes, I shall be made well. So she touched him and immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed. Jesus, knowing that power had gone out of him, said, who touched my clothes? And the disciples said, look, they were in a big crowd. Everybody was, t who touched my clothes? They said, are you flipping out, Jesus? You've been smoking pot or something? Hey, everybody's touching you. Everybody's touching you. But she was afraid. He looked and saw her and she was afraid and came and fell before him. And he said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. And so faith can move a mountain. Whoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not down in their heart, but shall believe that those things which they say shall come to pass. They shall have whatever they say. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll what? And you'll have them. Is believing always easy? No. You have to cast down doubt. You have to fill yourself with the word. You have to build yourself up. You got to fight. You got to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Receiving from God sometimes is a fight. There's all kinds of obstacles. And your number one obstacle is usually right there. Yeah. Now, the devil's an issue. He's an issue as well. But I think my number one obstacle is right here. The devil's no big deal. If I just keep my focus on Jesus, eh, I'm not too much worried about him. I'm not worried. Let's talk, let's talk about this lady. First thing we learned, she, she suffered many things from many physicians for 12 years. She went to all these places, spent all that she had. And, and the, the point here is most problems grow. Most problems grow and don't solve themselves. Most problems grow and don't solve themself, themselves. Scott Peck said this, problems do not go away. They must be worked through or else they will remain forever a barrier to growth and development of the spirit Psalms chapter these are, these are verses that deal with healing 
Psalms chapter 103, verse one. Uh, I love, when I first got saved, uh, I didn't know anything. I, I wasn't a church guy, you know. My, my, I think my mom took us to church once. My dad took us to church once. Um, and then, uh, but I didn't know anything. So when I, when I had an, I, I really had an encounter with Jesus Christ. I had an experience that's changed me now for almost 50 years. But um, I, I, I got my Bible. I got a Bible. I didn't have a Bible. I got a Bible, and I opened it. I opened it, and I, it was strange to me. First book in the Bible to me was Table of Contents, you know. Last book was Maps. I didn't get anything from either of those two books, you know. Job, I called Job in Indiana where I was born. We didn't go looking for a Job. We went looking for a job, you know. I didn't know. Deuteronomy, I couldn't pronounce. And there's so many other things I didn't know. But there's one thing that I had in my heart. I had a desire to learn. And I studied. Man, I slept with my Bible until I got married. And Nancy threw Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John out of the bed. I mean, I loved the word. Great peace have they which love your law. And nothing, wow, Psalms uh, 119, 165, great peace have they which love your law. Great peace have they. Are you troubled? Are you a worry wart, whatever that is? Are you troubled? Great peace have they which love your law and nothing, nothing. You know, in the church world, people are so easily offended so easily offended great peace have they which love your law and nothing no, that's not just the church world it's the whole world isn't it I shouldn't just single us out but it, it, there's too much of it going on in our churches today great peace have they which love your law and nothing shall offend them most problems grow they just don't go away they just don't go away uh, the Bible says bless the Lord O my soul I love this scripture See if I can remember it. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not. There's something, husbands, there's some things you better not forget. You better not forget your anniversary. Uh, I've never forgotten my wife's birthday. It's the same as mine. <laughs> we were both born on April the 27th. Of course, I'm much older and more mature than she is, but you know, we were both born in April the 27th. Um, forget not. Forget not to pay your taxes. When I first started working, first year, I said, I'm not paying no, they didn't take anything out of me and I wasn't going to pay them. Um, and then, uh, of course, it changed. They got me next year, though. They got me, I had to pay that and the other year. So pay your taxes. There's some things you don't forget, but listen to this. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. What are they? Now, this is the, the psalmist, David. Forget not all of his benefits. What are they? Who forgets all of your iniquity, all of your iniquities. Now, I know some of you don't have any iniquities, but I do. There's a bunch of iniquities in my family. Uh, who forgives all of your iniquities. Now, listen to this. Who heals all of your diseases. The same faith that causes you to believe that God forgives you of your sin is the same faith that you exercise in receiving your healing. Forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all of your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth, your youth is renewed. And I need some of that. I need that youth renewal. That your youth and I can look around I see some of you that need it too and your youth it's renewed isn't it funny our young people need to grow up and our older people need to get some youth and your youth is renewed like the what like the eagles I don't know what that means but it's, it means something okay renewed like the eagles um, I always say this pray your problems out of you you've heard me say it pray your problems out of you some of you guys, you're seeking miracles. You're seeking, you're seeking peace. You're seeking help. You're seeking freedom from addictions, from problems, this situation, circumstances in your life. You're seeking this. But you're never going to get free of those things unless you attack them. You've got to attack these things. They're not just going to casually drift away. Now, you may casually drift away, but they're not. So 
So uh, pray your problems out of you, but don't you allow your problems to keep you out of prayer. Pray your problems out of you, but don't allow your problems to keep you out of prayer. For if your problems keep you out, of, keeps you out of prayer, it all they also keep you away from power. Now listen to me carefully. Pray your problems out of you, but don't you allow your problems to keep you out of prayer. Pray your problems out of you, but don't you allow your problems to keep you out of prayer. I, I never, never pray less than an hour a day. Never. Why? Because I can't survive without it. You, oh, you must be a holy man. You, you pray a lot. No, I'm an unholy man, so I pray a lot. I lived in the consequences. I've lived in the consequences of sin for uh, years, decades now, and uh, I don't like it. Pray your problems out of you, but don't you allow your problems to keep you out of prayer? Well, if your problems keep you out of prayer, it also keeps you away from power. If it keeps you away from power, then your problem is always going to be your problem, and you're always going to be caught up in it. You're always going to be looking for an answer that's not there. You're always going to be seeking for somebody to lay hands on you for a miracle, and it's not going to be there. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, Proverbs, Proverbs 4.20 says uh, Solomon writing. He says this, my son, Proverbs 4.20, my son, give attention to my words. Did you get that, Miss Nancy? <laughs> She's got her phone up. I heard it too. Psalms 103. <laughs> at least she's paying attention, right? She's distracting all of us, but at least she's paying attention. My lovely wife. Uh, my son, my woman, my wife, give attention to my words. <laughs> Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your mouth and keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them. And listen to this. Life to all those who find them. And health, health to all your flesh. You guys are going to the doctors and getting prescriptions. Uh, some of you guys, uh, your medicine bag's bigger than your suitcase. <laughs> but you can resolve some of those issues. My son, give attention to my words. Let them not depart from your mouth, you know. And let me get it right. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your, from your mouth, from your heart. Oh, I had it earlier, didn't I? Okay, let's just, let's just get a little help here. My son, give attention to my words. Apply your ear to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all of their flesh. Some of you guys are unhealthy simply because you're not paying attention to the word of God and you don't have an active prayer life and it affects your health in a negative way. Now, am I lying to you? Am I telling you the truth? Some of you go days without praying, without reading your word. Some of you don't even know where your Bible is. You know, you have to find it. Uh, so my son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your mouth, but keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health. Life and health, life and health. I want to live for as long as I'm living. I don't want to die before I'm buried. I see that. People have died before they're ever buried. They've lost hope. They've lost faith. They've lost a purpose and a reason to live. I don't want that. And you have to fight for it. It seems like the older you get, the more you have to fight for it. Uh, women, William Channing said this, difficulties are meant to rouse, not discourage. Difficulties are meant to rouse, not discourage. My brothers and sisters, count it all joy when you fall into many temptations. Did I say that scripture earlier? Okay, let me say it now. My brothers and sisters, count it all joy when you fall into many tests, trials, temptations, difficulties, problems, and things that are almost difficult, impossible to resolve. Little paraphrase there. My friends, count it all joy when you fall into many temptations. Knowing this, no way you can look at temptation and problems and difficulties in a positive light unless you know this. Knowing this, that the testing of your faith produces patience. 
but let patience have its perfect work that you may be complete and entire, lacking nothing. You're never going to grow up without problems. You're never going to grow strong without problems. You're never going to overcome without problems to overcome. So quit whining. Ah! I remember when I was young, when I was a young believer, young Christian, I quit every week. I quit every week. I used to have Jesus one-way stickers all over my car. You guys need to go watch that Jesus Revolution. And it was a, yeah. Have you, I mean, how many seen it? I'm going to show it out to church as soon as it comes out. But uh, I'm, I'm, I was one of those guys that came in. I got saved, you know, and Lord moved in my life. And, I, man, I was on, you know, I used to be on fire for the devil. Now I was on fire for Jesus. I had Jesus one-way stickers all over my car, you know, all this stuff. And then I'd go through a rough time. I pulled the Jesus stickers off my, off my car. <laughs> I pulled the Jesus stickers off my car. Uh, I, I changed the radio station from Christian music to uh, rolling down the highway, running down the highway, looking for it. You know, and I just, uh, I'll be here. And whatever comes my way, you know, a little, I had a little four speed four cylinder, you know, but I thought it was a hot rod, you know. I just, but I couldn't live that way anymore. It was empty. And finally, Jesus helped me to grow up. And Nancy, she helped me. <laughs> Jesus and Nancy. I don't know which had the most influence in those early years, but. Second thing, what was the first point? Do you remember? Most problems grow and don't solve themselves. You know, we, we, we say that about, oh, they'll grow out of that. Yeah, they'll grow out of that and grow into something bigger usually. Second thing. She heard about Jesus, touched his garments, for she said, if I touch his clothes, I will be. So what you say, words are powerful. Watch what you say. For she said, if I touch his clothes, they work, work, they both, they work both negatively and positively. If I touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Now listen, here's a little statement. Remember that the solution to the issue is often simply a desperate determination to resolve it. Boom, great statement. Remember that the solution to an issue is often simply a desperate determination to resolve it. Some of us, we just really need to get desperate. Really need to get desperate. I remember, this is not in your notes, but I remember a, Nancy and I, we were in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's where our daughter Erica was born. Any of you guys went to women's thing this week? Did, did, yeah. Did, did you see Nancy and her twin up there? Yeah. Leading praise and worship? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Erica was, she was just letting it rip, wasn't she? Yeah, well, she used to do that when she was a kid, too. Yeah. She cried all the time, all the time, all the time. If she was awake, she was crying. If she was asleep, she was crying. Matter of fact, I nicknamed her. My nickname for her, when you see her next time, don't, don't call her Erica. Walk up to her and say, hey, Screamo, what's happening? <laughs> Screamo or Screamy? Screamy was when I was, Screamo was when I was mad. Screamo or Screamy, you know, so whichever one. You, uh, we moved back from Oklahoma. We've been there three years best jobs we ever had had a brand new house brand new cars and all this boom 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 and that all came to an end then we had nothing <laughs> isn't that the way life is man you're on a mountain and boom you're down on the bottom so we're coming back from Oklahoma worked for a great ministry that's where we met Bill and uh, Sandy Bossy you know and that's one of the negative things about being in Tulsa Oklahoma I know no lifelong friends lifelong f friends and uh so we're driving back to Oklahoma I had an old raggedy van had a new car that I was paying payments on with no job no money driving back with Screamo <laughs> she was just born that's why we stayed there long and we did um, and made it back we didn't have anything nothing no job you know, I, I, I did pick up some work I, I was a school teacher so I did some substitute teaching and that kind of matter of fact at that point I was saying I'm done with ministry I don't think I can do this anymore it was four years at one church and it was three years out there and two years with Pastor Wayne and I said, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I want a life. I just want a, a life where I know I'm going to get paid every week. I know I'm going to be able to go to work every day, and I know this and that's going to happen. I don't know. The ministry is so unpredictable, you know. And I said, I think I'm done with this. But I, I, in my mind, I wanted to just take a different direction, but my heart just wouldn't let me do it, you know. And so I didn't know what to do. 
we were living we didn't have a house we were living with Nancy's aunt and uncle Uncle Judd and Hazel you know we had three kids you know Daniel he was in middle school Isaac was in elementary school uh, Erica was a newborn uh, and Nancy and I and Erica shared a room together two boys slept on the couch in the living room and there was Aunt Hazel and Uncle Judd was Connie there no Connie was overseas at that time and so uh, man and Granny 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 Creel and so all of us there we were like the what was it the uh, she said Beverly Hillbillies no 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 <laughs> I was thinking more of the Waltons the Walton house <laughs> good night Screamo <laughs> good night Billy Bob but uh, you know I didn't know what to do I just knew I couldn't walk I just knew I couldn't quit but I wanted to I wanted to be in control of my life I wanted to be able to go to job work, go to work work 40 hours a week save money do that have a house have, you know and just have a career ministry was so unpredictable you folks that's been involved in it you know some, at times now as you get older things you get a little wiser but, but it was just I didn't know what to do you know what I did I said I'm going to fast I'm just going to fast um, and I fasted for 40 days 40 days I lost 30 pounds I fasted with juice I did a juice fast for 40 days no food no, 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 no kind of food a juice fast for 40 days. Lost 30 pounds. Had to buy new clothes. No, I didn't. I, got to, I gained it right back. But anyway, uh, my life changed. My life changed. Sometimes we just have to get desperate. Wade through the crowd of voices that are speaking, speaking out there. You know, my, my, my family was saying, why don't you just get a job and get on with your life and this ain't working for you and this kind of stuff in your own mind saying I can't do this anymore um, just determine that you're going to do it desperation get desperate I got desperate and the only reason I'm here today is because of that desperation moves one forward remember that the solution to an issue is often simply a desperate determination to resolve it Pope John the 23rd said this, consult not your fears but your hopes and dreams. Think not about your frustrations but about your unfulfilled potential. Concern yourself not with what you've tried and failed in but with what is still possible for you to do. Wow, that's powerful. Powerful. Psalms 20 verse 6 says, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Now you guys have been in church for a while. You'll remember this. Some trust in chariots, and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God for they, our enemies, are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. That was a chorus we used to sing. I would sing it, but you'd get sick and then I'd have to pray for you to get healed. But anyway, fear not. This is a scripture I used to stand so much on. Right before I'd go preach, when somebody was mad at you in the church, you'd be looking at them, they'd be glaring at you, you know. And you, uh, Psalms 41, 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. For I will help you. I will lift you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now listen to Psalms 43, 1 through 3. Now listen to the one who created you, the one who calls you by your name. He calls you by your name because he knows you personally. He knows everything about you. You are mine. Isn't it amazing that he knows everything about us and still wants us? Isn't it amazing that he knows everything about us and still wants us? That is amazing, isn't it? Um. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Neither shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God. For I, the Lord God, am your Savior, the Holy One of Israel. Desperation. Sometimes you just have to get desperate. Quit whining. Whining will get you nowhere. Complaining will get you nowhere. Well, it will. It'll get you, it'll get you judged. Quit whining. Quit complaining. Start praying. Get into the word. Reach out to Jesus fast. You don't have to be defeated, beat down, whipped, and kicked around in life. You do not. 
you can receive your healing you can receive help you can receive strength I know I've been through all of that you can do it last thing I love this point well it's not the last thing but I think I'm going to make it the last thing we'll see let's just if you get tired just leave <laughs> you're at home you can always flick it off you know <laughs> never allow the weakness of your faith excuse me never allow the weakness of your flesh to hinder the strength of your faith never allow the weakness of your flesh to hinder the strength of your faith she issue Miss Issue had a flow of blood for 12 years, suffered many things from many doctors. But do you know she was still out there looking for an answer? And when she heard of Jesus, I mean, for 12 years she had been to doctors and suffered many things. You know, I can only imagine what they were doing in those days. They used to, you know, George Washington. You know why George Washington died when George Washington died? I forget what, he got some kind of illness. They bled him. They used to bleed people, <laughs> just cut them and blood them <laughs> is that stupid or what <laughs> come on guys uh, suffered many things of many physicians Robert Shuler remember him he said if you listen to your fears you will die if you listen to your fears you will die is there anybody in here that don't have fear would you raise your hand because I want to point you out as the biggest liar this world has ever seen in the whole <laughs> If you listen, listen to your fears, you will, you will die, never knowing what a great person you might have been. Your living is determined not so much by what life brings to you as the attitude you bring to life, not so much by what happens to you as by the way your mind looks at what happens to you. Romans 8.31, what do we say to these impossibilities? If God is for us, 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 not the devil, if God is for us, not, not our enemies, if God is for us, nobody. They may come after us, but something's going to get after them when they do. I've had people come after me uh, a lot of times, but God has always been there. Uh, let's move on. Oh, I do want to make this one point, and you're going you're gonna to be shocked when I first say it. Just because God has said it, that doesn't mean it has to happen. I'm, I'm referring to that story. You remember? You remember the story. Just because God said it, that doesn't mean it has to happen. You remember the prophet Isaiah? Remember the prophet Isaiah? There was a king by the name of Hezekiah. Wouldn't that be a neat name? I'm glad my parents didn't name me that, but that's a neat name, I think. Because uh, what would they call you? Hey, Hezzy, get over here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Call me that again. Okay. Okay. Um, God spoke to Isaiah, told him to go to Hezekiah the king. Hezekiah, by the way, was a good king. Now, he had some issues, but basically he had a good record. Though over his overhaul leadership, he did a good job. The nation prospered. But uh, Isaiah received a message from God, go tell Hezekiah is going to die. He was sick. He was sick. So Hezekiah, I mean, Isaiah went into the king's quarters and said, Hezekiah got a message from you from God. You're going to die. Get your house in order you're going to die now listen Isaiah the prophet when Isaiah says you're going to die you're going to die so Isaiah gave the message to the king and boom he got out of there you know he's getting out of there and do you know what the Bible says Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he cried out to God now look God said you're going to die that was determined you're going to die Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He wept bitterly and cried out to God. Before Isaiah ever got out of the palace, and I'm sure he's getting out of there in a hurry, God spoke to him and said, hey, go back and tell Hezekiah. Go back and tell Hezekiah. You're going to live. I'm going to give you 15 more years. You're going to live. Your destiny lays in your hands. You can change circumstances. You can change situations. You can change issues. It's in your hands. And God will even change his mind when you respond to him in a way 
with humility and faith and brokenness and belief. God will change his mind. I can show you other parts in the scriptures where God changed his mind, but we don't have that much time today. Last thing. Are you ready? How long have I been preaching? They got a timer up. I don't look at that. You might as well take that down. I never look at it. Oh, we want to welcome a new person in our sound booth up there. It's, it's Mr. Don. Don. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Guys, can I just stop for a moment and make a little appeal? We need help. Whose church is this? Church. It's not my church. Some people say, that's Pastor Dan's church. Get off that. It's not mine. If it was mine, it would look a lot worse than it does now. I can tell you that right now. You guys keep it going. But we need help here. Uh, we need a drummer. We've been after a drummer for what? I mean, I like the can drummer. He sounds pretty good. He never, miss, never misses a beat. They do sometimes, but he never does. Uh, we need Mark. Mark's down here today. That's weird seeing Mark sitting here. Why? Uh, probably two years. Why? Because he's always up there making me sound good. Now, he don't make me preach good, but he makes me sound good even when I'm preaching bad. You know, and all the guys and girls, ladies that are up there as well, Janine, um, they're up there, David, making this work. David's always getting on me, Pastor Dan, give me your notes on time so I can put notes up behind you, you know? And I don't even know if they're up there or not. I'm always scared to look back there, scary. Uh, the Bible says look forward, not behind. But in forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to that which is before. We need help. This is your church. This is your church. It's only going to be as strong as you help make it. I can only take it so far. Our board can only take it so far. Our volunteers can only take it so far. Our paid staff can only take it so far. But you can take it where it needs to go when we go together. Okay. Do I need to say anything else about that? And which brings us to this point. Release your faith through a point of contact. That lady said, if only I may touch Christ's clothes. That was her point of contact. If only I can touch his clothes, even the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Establish a point of contact with Jesus where you demonstrate and release your faith in him. I'm, I'm, you remember some of that time I was going to give up in the ministry? One of those times I was going to give up in the ministry among the hundreds of others. Uh, but there was a point of contact. I am going to fast and pray until the situation changed. And, and that's when our church opened up. After two months, the church opened up. We stayed an extra month because Uncle John and Hazel went to, to um, Central America where their daughter was a missionary, and we kept granny. I got up every morning and cooked granny. You had to have one egg over easy. If it was not over easy, it was not going to be easy for you for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and I made grits, you know. I hate grits. I don't know where they came from, but they can go back to wherever they came from because I don't want any, you know. Yeah, you had to have grits, and you had, what was it, a, a tea a tea with a little tea bag in it. just had to be just right. And how did I get into that? Point of contact. All right, I don't know how I got into it. Okay, let's go on. Establish a point, point of contact with Jesus where you demonstrate and release your faith. And oh, how I got into that was when, when we were living there with the Aunt Hazel and Uncle Judd that I made a commitment that, hey, I'm going to fast and pray until God changes things for me, changes things for me. Uh, for Miss Issue, it was touching Christ's robe. For me, it was fasting and prayer until God moved and, and whatever it meant. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's giving. Um, if, if you're in my notes, look at them down here. You'll see where it says, it says, Pastor Dan, every time I pay my tithe and give, I'm planting a seed of faith for financial blessing. Every time, I'm not just, I don't give the church money. I'm not giving the church money. I'm planting seed in the church because that seed is coming back into my life. We are talking about tipping this morning. When I'm, at a, when I'm at a restaurant and I give that waiter or server 
you know, um, when I give them a good tip, if, I, if you serve me, buddy, I'm going to tip you good because you are bigger than me and you come to my church and I'm afraid of you. I'm going to, I'm going to tip you good. Right, Carrie? <laughs> but be a giver. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I've, I've proven that in my life. So every time I pay my tithe and give, I'm planting a seed of faith for financial blessing. When I pray, I'm planting a seed for answers. When I reach out to those in need, my needs are met. When I lighten some else, someone else's load, my load is lightened. When I lift someone that is down, I'm lifted up. When I study God's word, he encourages and strengthens and comforts and builds my faith. As I travel on one rough road of reality filled with potholes and bumps, Jesus is with me, Hallelujah. absorbing the shock of my trials and difficulties and problems. A point of contact. It works, guys. Sometimes you just need something. It helps. William Booth said, Faith and work should travel side by side, step answering to step, like legs of men walking. First faith, then works. Then faith again, and then works again. Till you can scarce, scarcely determine which is the one and which is the other. Okay. Well, I got to get an old Roberts quote in. He made so big a impression on my life in the early years. Um, he said this, there is a Jesus who is real. There is a Savior that can wash away every sin of your life, a healer that can heal every disease of your body. If you read his story, you know, he had tuberculosis. He was, his parents were Pentecostal preachers, and he didn't like them. I mean, he liked them, but he didn't like the ministry. And um, he, he went off to college, was playing college basketball. He collapsed on the court, blood coming out of his mouth, and they found out he had tuberculosis. And he laid on a deathbed for months. And finally, some evangelists came through. His sister heard him. The evangelist saw miracles in the service. And she went home and she said, Oral, God is going to heal you. Seven words that changed his life and really has changed the world. He was the first one to ever take the gospel on, on, on television. First one. To bring cameras into his ministry. I used to, and that's what I say. He made an impression on my life. And even my mom and dad, who my, my mom was a great lady. My dad was horrible. Uh, he had even watched Old Roberts. <laughs> Didn't help him, but he watched him, you know. Uh, and I remember as a little kid sitting there in front of that TV, watching those people, black and white TV. You know, some of you don't even know that there was a black and white TV, but there was. There's a Jesus who is real. There's a Savior that can wash away every sin of your life, a healer that can heal every disease of your body, a Christ that can deliver you from every trouble that is trying to destroy your being and take away your peace of mind and peace of soul. The Bible says in Mark 9, 23, if you can believe, all things are possible. And you can't believe because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Nancy and I were in Phoenix, Arizona, closing. We were in Phoenix, Arizona, going to a pastor's conference there. And it was great. It was great. We were just enjoying it. I was, we were at, eating at some restaurant. I don't know where it was. And got a phone call. And uh, it was our church secretary, Judy. Judy said to me, uh, Pam has just come to the church. She's been diagnosed with leukemia. She's in the auditorium. And you could hear in the background, she's screaming and crying and bellowing and hollering and praying and agonizing. She had two kids. You know, one was in the middle school. The other one was in uh, high school, a freshman, and she'd just been pronounced, you know, as having leukemia. And so she calls me and tells me that. And I could hear her in the background from the phone. She was in the auditorium, the office was right before you went to the end to the auditorium, and, and I could hear that. And so I said, okay, uh, when, when she comes out, call me back because I want to talk to her. And so she hung up. So I'm in this lobby, you know, this, of this restaurant. Just Nancy's still in, in there. And she don't know what I'm dealing with. So I'm just standing there and I'm saying, God, God, what am I going to tell this lady? What am I going to tell Pam? What am I going to tell her? And, uh, man, I didn't really know. Here's what I, 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 here's what I felt the Lord speaking into my heart. 
You think this is easy? You know, like today, I think we've had some laughing moments, haven't we? I try to be a comedian sometimes, but I'm not. But, you know, I just try to be me. I just try to be me. I tried to be a preacher when I first started, but that wasn't me. I just had to be me. Just be real and be open. Sometimes that, but anyway, what did I tell this lady? And the Lord spoke to my heart. He impressed me with this message. Pam, here's, here's what I was going to tell her. Here's what I, the Lord was dealing with my heart. I'm in this restaurant, remember? I just got the news. The Lord spoke to my heart. Tell her this. This is not the end of your life. It's a new beginning for you. Okay? Now, I knew that was God, but I was scared to death. You think somebody laying on a sick bed when you walk into that hospital room and they're facing death, open heart surgery, and you can just go in there and give them a Bible verse and walk out and, and just take it nonchalantly? You can't. So here's what I start thinking. If I go tell her that and then she don't get well, I have no credibility. I'm done. It'll follow me for the rest of my life. Yeah, that stupid preacher went in there and told that lady she was going to live, and she died. Wrecked the family, devastated the, you know, and I was scared. I was scared. So I went back, sat down, told Nancy, you know, what was going on. Nancy was, she was, of course, concerned. Both of us were concerned. And then finally, my phone rang again, so I went back out into that little lobby alcove there, and there she was, weeping and crying, could barely talk, Pastor Dan. And I said, Pam, I know this is hard. I'm not promising you that it's going to be easy, but here's what I feel God's saying to you right now. Pam, this is not the end of your life. It's just a new beginning. And I left it there. And I, we got back, and she went to doctors. She went to the hospital. She went treatments, and uh, she, she made it. She made it. She made it. She saw her son graduate from high school, saw him graduate from Air Force Academy, saw him. Uh, my son went to his, uh, where he was, uh, I don't know. They had a ceremony where he was became a, a officer. My son pinned the whatever it was, you know, his, his medals on him, and and then his daughter graduated. Her daughter graduated, you know, from from high school. She got to see all of that grandchildren. She got to see all of that, and she's still seeing it because she's still alive. I've been here 17 years. That was probably 25 years ago. She's still alive. But I tell you, if God hadn't have spoke to me, I would have never said anything other than just stand on the word and I'll pray for you. Because I have no power to heal. I have no power to change anything. But God has it all. And he's on your side. Sometimes you just have to get desperate. You have to step out of your comfort zones. You have to reach out to him like you've never reached out to him before. You just have to push forward. And I guarantee you, if you'll do it, if you'll do it, he won't let you down. He may scare you to death. You may be like a Hezekiah laying on a deathbed, you know, with thinking, I don't know if I'm going to make it. But you, if you'll turn your face to the wall, God can change his mind about the circumstances and situations of your life. And he's big enough to do something about it. But you got to do something. So sometimes it's more than just coming and get somebody to pray for you. It's you standing on your faith. Everybody can receive a miracle when they stand on their faith. Not everyone's going to receive a miracle through the gift of the Spirit. And if you limit yourself to that one thing, you may not get anything. Stand with me.